E. Blue Gaming. Well, hello guys. Welcome back to my Kerbal Space Program series. So in this episode, we are absolutely ready to go to the moon, and that's our plan. Um, most of my contracts at this point are rescuing people, but um, there's at least enough excuse to go to the moon. One of the contracts I couldn't pick up was collecting science data from the surface of the moon, which is my goal. I want to land on the moon and do that. Um, and one of them is science data from space around the moon. So I'm going to go to the moon, do that contract, complete it so get it, I check it off, and then um, pick up the contract for science data at the surface of the moon and finish that one. So. This is my rocket. It has about just under 6,400 Del V, which is plenty to get my way all the way to the surface of the moon and back. So the cool part this time around is that I have fly-by-wire, which allows me to still have all the flight controls, even with just one Kerbal on board. And I prefer to have that one Kerbal be a scientist so that any um, well, the, the goo canister and the material bay can essentially be repeatable science. Because that's always nice to have. Um, so everything is on its way. Unfortunately, without Kerbal Engineer on board this time around, but that's alright. I also now have access to some action groups, so I decided to uh, use the abort action group to collect all the science instruments. That makes things a little bit faster. I don't have to mess around at launch and add all the menus up to collect all the data as I go through it. Um, new biomes I'm going to be reaching is basically, since I'm going to go into saying basically again, um, since I'm going to be going into low lunar orbit, uh, there might be an opportunity to do more EVAs in low lunar orbit, uh, get more EVA science that way, and then obviously when I come down to the surface there's going to be an opportunity for more science that way. Um, I don't think I go so far as, like, jumping back to the Space Center and upgrading the astronaut complex. I think it's the astronaut complex for surface samples. It might be the R&D Center. I can't remember which one, but it's expensive, and I don't think I end up doing it. So I'm now performing my transit burn from Kerbin to the moon, um, which I always use Scott Manley's uh, sort of rule of thumb, where you just sort of line up the craft with the horizon of Kerbin and the moon. And that, that creates the right degree separation for your apoapsis to the, uh, the orbital swath that the moon will carve out. So um, that should give us a nice encounter that allows us to go into low, uh, get a nice low pass for low, curb, or low lunar insertion. So I'm a little bit off the orbital plane, so I get a little bit of ways from Kerbin and then fire uh, normal a little bit just to just to even it out a little bit and get right along the equator. So I take a couple of little corrective burns to get this nice little pass. And I'm speeding this all up, by the way. Obviously, it took a lot longer to do all this. So now I'm in uh, high, over, high over the moon, so it's time to keep repeating signs, make sure that I haven't missed anything, transmitting everything um, that needs to be transmitted, and moving on. So now we'll swing down to the periapsis here and perform the braking burn that'll insert us into low lunar orbit which is always exciting. Can't you tell that I'm excited? I'm excited to land on the moon and do all that fun stuff. Yes, I am excited. So anyways, I busy myself with uh, completing some more science, like doing EVA reports in different biomes and transmitting some science to complete one of the contracts so that I can pick up the other contract, which is getting science from the surface of the moon, which actually makes landing on the moon practical. Um, but since I forgot to put, uh, whatchamacallit, Kerbal Engineer on this craft, I'm very cautious about doing anything close to a suicide burn, so this is a fairly fuel-inefficient descent. I'm just sort of lowering myself, slowing down, lowering myself, slowing down, so gravity's adding more velocity that I have to burn off, so... It's not, not the prettiest descent. This is usually what I always did prior to getting Kerbal Engineer and getting some sense of, like, okay, you can burn now and it'll be okay, so... If you, if you don't have Kerbal Engineer, I highly recommend it. It just gives you a little bit more information about your craft that you otherwise would have to calculate on your own. Um, but I mean, at this point, who doesn't know about Kerbal Engineer? Who am I telling this to? So here we are, about to make Touchdown with Bob Kerbin. Kerman? Kerbin? Kerbin? There we go, Touchdown. Didn't even need the lights, because I landed on the far side of the moon, which presents a problem. It means I can't transmit the crew report directly from the surface. Um, I, 
kind of cut out me fumbling about realizing that. Um, but yeah, I just collect all of this very high reward science, as you do, as you do. I have to say, um, you know, the more you play this game, the less fascinating or less thrilling landing on the moon becomes, but there's always some kind of spark about it. You always kind of feel some sense of accomplishment every time you land on the moon. Um, and for anyone who is unfamiliar with this game, landing on the moon is actually way more difficult than landing on Minmus. Uh, going to Minmus, even though it's farther away, it's just a tiny bit more Del V, and it's much lower gravity, so it's, it's a much easier body to navigate than the moon. But uh, here's Bob tumbling down naturally onto his head. This is how you collect proper surface samples. Um, and then I, okay, yeah, so I used the jetpack to get an extra EVA flying over the crater because I didn't do that on the descent. So, it's a nice, easy way to make sure that you get that science. Um, so everything's been collected. All the science experiments have been restored and ready to be run again if necessary. Um, I'll just be, I'm just taking in the sights right now, as you can see. It's, it's, you know, it's standard practice. You land on the moon, you just gotta soak it in a little bit. And eventually here, I'm gonna try to knock this thing back up into the, into low lunar orbit. I try to tilt the nose over to aim it east, and it just doesn't work out, so I have to kind of hop it up off the ground, aim it east, and get that apoapsis up to about 10,000 meters, and then bring it up to the apoapsis, fire horizontal to the, to the horizon just prior to the apoapsis, and get it into low moon orbit, like you do. I'm, I'm doing, I'm channeling a lot of Ethan, from Ethan and Ela. And now, standard practice for returning, and making sure you do as much science on the way back, and making sure you grab as many contracts as you can. Because there's no harm in, uh, there's no, there's no fear in losing the revert on this mission. I don't think, anyways. Uh, slow the craft down before re-entry, burning off the excess fuel. Doing one last little materials bay in the upper atmosphere on the way in. And then, we, uh, just bring it in for re-entry. Deploy the chutes, slow that craft down. Make sure you get as much science, as always, always checking for science. Uh... Yeah, I wish there was more to talk about on this one. I mean, it seems like it should be a more uh, enjoyable uh, return, or more enjoyable mission. But, um, yeah, pretty much standard practice for me at this point. Splash down, and send Bob on an EVA. And as always, make sure that every last bit of science is collected and repeated, and you got everything that you can possibly get from your mission. So obviously we stand to gain a lot of science from this mission. Uh, a lot more than what we have been getting. So we're going to have to put a lot of that to use in the tech tree. And we're also going to have to jump in. And So 882 science. Jump into mission control. Make sure we get any contracts we want to pick up. R&D center. Selectively picking out parts of the tech tree that I think are going to be valuable for the next several missions. Because uh, we're going to be wanting to do a lot of uh, recovery of, of Kerbal's stranded in orbit uh, and doing a lot of ferry missions. These are great ways to earn money and earn Kerbals so you don't have to spend money hiring Kerbals, things like that. Um, so the next mission actually, I, I've already shot it. It's going to be a lot of fun. It's a pretty exciting mission because one of the guys kind of kind of gets in a pretty sticky situation with the moon and it's a pretty daring rescue that takes a few attempts by me so it was I had, had to definitely think outside the box of how to do it. So that was it, guys. I hope you enjoyed. See you next time.